How about a little story? It's a really short story, just one page long, and it's not really a story, but more of an account. I will not be using any accents this time, considering the offensive nature of those things, but I will try to keep my voice smooth and buttery. So make yourself a cup of coffee, ladies and gentlemen, and join me. Or you can make a cup of tea, or anything really. Fill your cup with water, if you so desire. Or if it's flavor you want, fill it with juice. Or milk, there's no shortage of liquids with which to fill a cup. You can also fill it with a solid, or a gas, or plasma, or a combination of all these things, or only two of these things, or three. You can fill it with sand, like in that one Jimi Hendrix song. Or maybe you don't want to fill your cup, and that's fine. An empty cup works too. So grab that cup, grab it hard, and hold on to it tight. And drink from it while listening, or gulp, or sip, or you can lick it. Even if there's nothing to drink or lick, or gulp, or anything. Just as long as you have your cup, you will be fine. And eventually it may fill up on its own, or it may not. In which case you'll have an empty cup for the rest of your life. So, now that you have your cup, which is either full or empty, or half empty, or even three quarters empty, or even just one quarter empty, we can start with the video. And you can listen to this absolutely amazing, mind-blowingly original story full of dramatic moments and tension and twists and action for free, for not a single penny, a story that not even Shakespeare could have written, or Dostoevsky, or Hemingway, or Bukowski, or even the Jews. So again, grab that cup made of plastic or ceramic or glass or metal, you can drink out of a bowl if you want. Did I mention bowls? That's doable. You can drink out of a bowl, or a thermos, or a jug, or straight out of the bottle. It's your decision and yours alone. It's your decision if you want to use a straw. It's your decision if you want to drink from your hands, or someone else's hands. And finally, it's your decision what temperature you choose to drink your drink. For instance, I like to drink boiled water, and that is fine. If you want to drink melted ice cream, or if you want to drink a chicken smoothie, that is fine. So, without further ado, now that we're on the same page, and you have your cup with you, without further ado, do do, do do, do, let's begin. Music, please. It was at the end of a long day of work that I hospitalized that son of a bitch. I was where you'll always find me on a Friday at around 6 p.m. Chicken Land. It's my favorite fried chicken joint. Now, let me tell you about this place. I've been eating chicken for as long as I've been alive, and I mean it. I remember my mother telling me I came out of the womb with a drumstick in my hand. Not a chicken place in town that I haven't set foot in. You can say I'm somewhat of a chicken connoisseur, but by God and by golly, this particular place, Chicken Land, there's just something special about it. So special, I've been frequenting it for almost two decades, ever since my father introduced me to it and got me addicted. And despite being in business for 20-something years, the place looked like a total ruin. The dying neon sign on the front, the dying light bulbs inside, the wobbly dying chairs, Jesus Christ, everything was wobbly and dying, but people came for the food of course, and the food was heavenly. So I was waiting for my four piece meal, my weekly fix, my Sunday to church, call it what you will, and it was me with a briefcase, some other guy with a newspaper, and old Larry Kay in the kitchen, see? I don't remember if there was anyone else, but it doesn't matter. Anywho, I was a few minutes away from getting my meal and getting the heck out of there when in walks this guy. This pants sagging ass hanging guy. 
and he starts tapping his shoe against the floor and making a noise. He had on a gold striped cap and a dirty blonde beard, sweatpants, puffy windbreaker, gold watch, green eyes. Looked like some spoiled brat who never bothered to get out of his pajamas, I guess because he didn't have to prove anything to anybody. And he went to the counter after less than a minute of audible impatience and he started ringing, or actually punching, at old Larry Kay's service bell. And what do you know? Old Larry came out of the kitchen. Cigarette in mouth and twenty-year-old nylon apron shiny with grease as always. What's the matter? said old Larry, and the kid repeated Larry's question to him in a voice I didn't quite like, and said, I called you fifteen minutes ago and my food's still not ready. So what, said old Larry, your food's still cooking, takes more than- But the kid interrupted and said, How does it take you fifteen minutes to cook a bunch of chicken nuggets? And he walked closer to the counter and closer to Larry, who was standing there completely detached, probably thinking about going home, cracking open a cold one, putting on a movie or something, going to bed, anything but this crap. Then the kid pointed his finger at Larry, his manicured finger with its shiny shiny ring looked like he was about to say something then said forget it keep your fucking food and just as he was turning around to make his way to the door i stopped him he looked me up and down me a professional nobody a walking briefcase really putting my hands on his shiny puff and he said got a problem and i answered yeah i got a problem do you have a problem with me having a problem he said, no, I don't have a problem with you having a problem. And I said, good. And he said, good. And I said, okay. And then he said, okay. And then it was silence. And then I broke the silence by saying, you don't speak to Larry like that, no matter who you are, kid. Uh-huh, said the kid. Uh-huh, I answered. And I was only aware of Larry K.A. standing there and smoking, like he was enjoying the show. Well said the kid. If you like Larry so much, why don't you all over his face, emphasizing every syllable, smiling like he's untouchable and going into unnecessary detail and finally spitting on the floor. Too much of a mother who probably likes to to spit in my face, I guess. And I looked at his saliva down there on the floor, the same floor that my father, 20 years ago, set my small feet upon and let me spread my wings, my chicken wings. <laughs> I knocked him out clean and wiped his spit off with his golden cap. The other man looked up from his newspaper, satisfied his curiosity, then looked back down. Larry shrugged and walked back in the kitchen. And four minutes later, I was in my car eating Larry's Divine Chicken, and when I was done, the kid was taken out of the shop on a dirty stretcher. The end. Except that's a lie. All of it. Because I was the guy with the newspaper. I was a chicken. In the chicken shop waiting for my chicken meal like a chickeny chicken. Just reading my papers while the two men talked at each other. I didn't want to intervene or get my hands dirty. I preferred to let things play out how they wanted to play out, you know? Wu Wei, actionless action. Observe quietly, then go home. Which I did in the end. And I ate my food and had a nice shower actually, then went to sleep. Woke up today with only this one regret. That I did not punch this guy. That I did not get all animated and passionate about a man named Larry. I have to say though, I was tempted to break things up between the two men using my magical police badge and my magical police gun. Oh well, I guess I'm a chicken.